Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the phone number in the description. Yeah, one three to the 500 cap. Okay, cool. The, uh, the villain, we're pretty deep. The villain in this hand, don't know him, but I've been playing about four hours in this session. Middle-aged white guy, he's seen him spaz a couple of times, and he's really not happy with me visibly. I can tell he's upset with me. I've been beating him up a little bit, yeah. calling light on him occasionally and stuff. So I can tell he's not happy specifically with me. Okay. So uh, I'm, he's got uh, 950, and I cover with a little over 1,300. Okay, so 950 effective. So pretty deep once again here, right, for this yeah, level. Pretty yeah, deep. yeah, pretty deep. Pretty yep. deep. Um, so I'm in the big blind. Uh-huh. The uh, usual three limpers, and then <laughs> he makes it 15 from the cutoff which is standard pre-flop size in this game. Is it over three and limpers? I, Isn't that just a, yep. wouldn't that just be a straight open though? Um, now he, very, very few people in this game vary their raise size. Based, based upon if there's limpers or not? Yeah, I find that that's pretty rare actually in, in this game. <clears throat> so you're saying that he would make it 15 if there were no limpers and there's three limpers and people just still make it 15? Yep. Because that would, I would Probably. expect, I mean, obviously I've never played in your game, but I would expect those straight open to be 15. And then if there are limpers, people will, you know, make it 20, 25, 30. That just seems really, really small to me. But I, I guess if you're saying that that's not abnormal, okay. Not, not, not at all in this game. I'd say 70, 80% of the players do not vary their bet size based on the number of limpers ahead of them. Like if everybody limps in and a guy has like jacks on the button, they're still going to make it 15? No, that guy. That guy would probably raise bigger, but in in general, two or three limpers. Okay. You know, a suit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not uncommon. Yeah. So, so so he makes a fifteen, and I call in the big blind with uh, two red deuces, and one of the limper calls. Okay. One and limper calls. Come, one limper calls. One limper calls. Okay. <clears throat> yep. In between. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, so flop comes ten nine deuce, and it's a rainbow. Ten nine deuce so flop. rainbow. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I flop bottom set. Okay. Checks the villain who makes it twenty five, and this guy c bets hundred percent of the time, and uh, which is where I've called him late on occasion and got him frustrated because uh -huh. he uh, often often gives up. So he bets he bets to twenty five. Yep. And I check raise to seventy five. So this is interesting here because if you say that he's c betting one hundred no matter what, so that his c bet isn't really doesn't really mean anything, right? Like he has no, yeah. no sort yeah. of, you know, no, no concern for the board. What? How deep is the limper in between, by the way? Do you uh, remember? I don't remember. So probably, probably standard. Most people don't buy in deep. So it's like the only thing that I'm thinking, probably... the only thing that I'm thinking here is, is that if this guy's just going to be betting 100, then I would probably call more than check raise. Now I am not a huge proponent if you've listened to the show of slow playing or if you've listened to any of my material but there obviously are some times to do it and um yep. especially with the third guy in there i might call here with deuce deuce uh, the, for the reason of of the guy betting like 100 and just keeping the other guy in you know uh, i thought of that like uh -huh. like if i had a nine or even a pair between two and nine against this guy i would call and right. a lot of times i'd be good he'd give up but we're so deep and you know if he does have something I need to get some money in the pot. No, and, that, I mean, that's also, that's definitely true. Yeah. I mean, that's the other side of it, too, that you're so deep that you want to obviously build the pot up. So, yeah, more more power to you. He, he hasn't spazzed against me, but he has spazzed a couple of times against with us, some other players in some really wild spots. So I, and he's frustrated with me. Yeah. I'm visibly frustrated. So, well, that's why, like, I'm uh, thinking that, like, if you sort of – he seems like the type that if you call and you get a heads up, even on any turn card, he's going to continue to barrel. And then you'd have to check raise now to take the lead back. But yeah. let let him just hang himself instead of getting him to fold if he has air. But that's fine. Yeah. So you make it 70? Yeah, limper folds. Okay. Uh, and then Villain thinks for a very short period of time. Uh -huh. And then three bets over my check raise uh, to 200 with uh, a lot of bravado and confidence. Well, I mean, now you just call down, I feel like. Um, unless, yeah. I mean, in old school No Limit, like people were so bad that they would do this with an overpair and you could just get it in. But I, I feel like now, obviously, um, with what he's representing, besides maybe, I guess, maybe like a 10-9 type of hand, then he, I mean, a, a, a three bet to a, a blind flop check raiser is a, is a 
pretty polarized move, right? Like meaning that yep. that should wrap like a set. He could have like a draw like Queen Jack or something like with the back door, but a lot of people will just call there. But I, I don't you don't want to put the last bet in here now. You can just let him blow it off or have the lead or something like that. So I would call. That's that's good. That's that's what I thought. Is if I uh-huh. did anything other than call, he, if I raised, he was gonna. The only thing that calls me there, so I just called. Yep. Okay. I thought for a few minutes. To, to mm-hmm. Thought for maybe a minute. And then I yeah. Called. Yeah. Uh, the turn comes an ace, and okay. it completes a rainbow. Okay. I wasn't happy to see an ace because he might have had them. Uh, so I knew I check, mm-hmm. and the villain with the same speed, so insta, didn't think very much at all, and still the same kind of confident bravado uh makes it 300 so you guys started with 950 the pot is 400 on the flop and then it was what like 60 pre-flop so 460 760 so if you call it's 1060 and you'll have 450 left is that right does that that sound about right So, so usually what happens is that if you've got Kind of the threshold, which is like one third of a pot size bet left, you should probably just check jam. You should just like raise or fold. I mean, a lot of people don't, you know, they they're they're not exactly sure of what the math is in that spot. So you've got yeah. maybe forty percent of a pot size bet left. You know, something okay. like that. It, it's tough to fuck this hand up. I mean, I could see check jamming, but it sounds to me like you think that this guy's got a like you said. You keep using the word bravado, so. As a live thing, I might just like hem and haw and call and just check the river to him. And because um, if you check jam, it's pretty pretty strong. The other thing too here is is that if he three bets turn, and now he's betting on an ace, like it still seems very very polar, right? Because now is he doing that with kings and queens or jacks? Right, you know what right. I mean? So I would just call and then just check to him based upon your history with the guy. Oh, that's good. That's exactly what I did. Okay. I thought for a long time and I called. Yeah. And uh, River comes to five, and I checked again, and uh, he checked behind. Yeah, that sucks. Which, which, yeah. yeah, which sucks. Although, he, and uh, I announce a set, and uh, he's really upset, and he says, well, let's see it, and I show it to him, and then he mocks. I never saw what he had. Um, but uh, I mean, the thing yeah, is, is that so, so, I mean, if he checked back, then obviously he probably has some sort of showdown value, right? But the thing is, yeah. is that, I'm trying to think of like what is he what does he have though like like would he did he bet three bet the flop with like ace king ace queen and then hit it on the turn I mean if he has ace 10 he should be betting if he has aces up he should be like probably betting all those hands it doesn't sound like to me like he took a long time and checked back so maybe he ran into an ace or maybe he just gave up but I I don't have I don't really have that much of a uh issue with the way that you played it once somebody three bets your check raise on the flop you know what i mean it's just like you, you yeah. sort of just have to give them the lead because they're going to be you know usually very strong or very weak ace 10 it's people say like, he had uh, ace 10 come on i don't, I don't buy it ace 10, I, ace 10 well actually i'm i wouldn't put ace 10 out of his range at all i would say nine ten, uh queen jack or ace 10 or the hands that i give them after well, after the river just why why that. would he check back the river with ace 10 because he puts you on a set why is he betting scared. the turn? But, well, the the turn maybe he thinks that he beats two pair, and then I call again, and that's really really strong, and he's scared. So, like we have less than he has less than a half pot size bet left, but in absolute terms, it's still a lot of money. No, I agree with you. I just I but but the part that sort of doesn't make me it d- makes me think that he's not scared is him three betting your check raise on the flop, and then continuing to bet three hundred on the turn. I mean, if somebody takes that line with ace ten. Three bets, a check raise, and bets turn turns ace ten, and they've got half a pot size bet. They're just going to check back the river on ten nine deuce ace five. Yeah. I yeah, mean, maybe not. <laughs> I mean, just, I mean, yeah, it's maybe. Uh, yeah. He could so. have been spazzing on the river, spazzing on the on the his three bit on the flop, and then lucked into an ace and thought maybe well, that, it was good. Yeah, that's know. what I was thinking too. Yeah. And the, and the issue yeah. there though is is that like if you check raise the turn, I mean. You're going to double check raise like that's if he's any type of player, he should be folding like a single pair. So I don't really have a problem with the way that you played it. Sometimes that happens, you know, all right. It's just rare that people check rate or three bit over check raise. Yeah, no, for sure. All right. Thanks for the call.
Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA200, click on the link right there.